Good morning. It's uh, about 7.30 in the morning and uh, it's kind of misty. There's the ferry pulling into the terminal over there. But as you can see, the Anchorage has still got the boats that were in it when I closed for yesterday. So it's, it's pretty empty. Not too much going on. Over here there's nothing. There's a couple over this way. Very quiet. Except it was kind of boisterous. It was quite windy most of the night, so we bounced around a bit, but everything held and everything is still in one piece, so that's good. <laughs> I'm going to head off about a uh, quarter after eight, and uh, the tide should be just right for getting through Poe Pass on my way home. We're underway. That's where I came from. That's Blind Bay back in there. And uh, we're going up the rest of Harney Channel and straight ahead that point on the left hand side is uh, Broken Island. Or Broken Point, I should say. It's not an island. It's, it's attached to the mainland. And then right through there is where we're headed. That's a channel that leads to Pole Pass and Wasp Passage. And we're going to take Pole Pass. It's just a little shorter by maybe a mile. And uh, it's kind of pretty going through there. So. Yeah. Over there is the uh, Orcas Island Ferry Terminal. Or one of them maybe. I think there might be another one on the other side of the island. And right along here, up in there, is uh, West Sound. Um, I have not been in there, so I don't know what's in there, but uh, someday I'll explore it, I'm sure. That's a uh, lost passage right through there. We could go that way and then around, so we're going to take Pole Pass, which is a little more direct. And Pole Pass is right up there, but we can't go straight through there because there's some reefs uh, offline uh, from that side of the channel. So we're going to hug the side of uh, Bell Island here and then jog up. You see this power boat coming through, but he's uh, got a, draws a lot less water than you do. I need six feet to uh, make it through. And um, if my calculations are right, Pole Pass is kind of a narrow uh, channel with the reefs on both sides, so it's a little bit tricky. But and then also uh, currents can get pretty strong going through there but if my calculations are right we should go through just at about slack tide so shouldn't have a problem the pass is dead ahead there's a seaplane coming through here this whole area is serviced by small uh, private airplanes and charter flights the speed limits, uh, which are what is buoys mark uh, through here, of, uh, I think it's like six or seven knots. And the reason for that is people come flying through here in great huge wakes with their boats and damage these people's docks along the shoreline. They get angry over that, and you can't certainly blame them. I sure would too. So I'm only doing about four knots, so I'm well under the. Under the and another boat's coming through the other way. He should clear way before I get there. Okay, here's Pole Pass. Exciting, isn't it? right on the point there. And he sees an awful lot of boats go through here. And up over where all those boats are over there is Deer Harbor. I'm 
back at Old Pass on the other side. And the boat going through. Some nice homes in, along the shorelines here. Here in Alpha. And there's a is back in there plus room for anchored boats so it's, it's a real nice spade and there's things to do in there too but we're going to cut through that pass there which is called, I think called North Pass and then around the uh, edge of Corpus Island up through President's Channel and from there on, it's pretty much uh, just a repeat of what I've already done coming down. So I don't think I'm going to be filming a lot of it. But if something exciting shows up, I'll certainly turn the camera on. A tour of the inside of the boat. This is uh, looking down from the companionway. <coughs> There's a table in the dinette area. Over here is the, the kitchen or galley area. And down over here is my navigation area. And way up front is uh, one sleeping area called the V-berth. And uh, right underneath where we are now is another one. I'll have to go down in there to uh, show that to you. Well, there's all kinds of junk in there, so you probably can't see it, but that is a fairly large sleeping area. It's about the size of a, a, a double bed, and two people can sleep in there pretty comfortably, except the person on this end has this thing, uh, so they only have about three feet of height, whereas uh, the guy over there or the girl over there has uh, much, much more room. I don't know if it'll work, but I'll see if I can get in here to show you. It does... There is uh, quite a bit of room back in there. And you, all, of course all this junk can easily come out of there. And it does when there's more than just me aboard. But since it's only me, i just taking advantage and throwing the stuff here and not worrying about it. And then over here is a little storage area where I have my tools and spare parts and things like that. And back over here, if you can see it, is a called the hanging locker and it's very small but you can hang things in there and then here is another little storage area there's lights uh, all over the place so there's plenty of you know, light here's the there's the navigation area, and it's got the electrical electrical panel here, uh, the VHF radio and a stereo there. That's the control for the heater and the sump, or not the sump pump, but the bilge pump. And uh, here's my chart chart book, and underneath there is a uh, room for more charts. And the gauges are up there. That's a wind speed indicator and the depth gauge. And there's also repeaters of those uh, up above so I can see them when I'm actually driving the boat. The galley area or the kitchen for those of you who aren't nautically inclined. The stove is under here. And it's a two burner propane with a small oven. And the sink has hot and cold running water, as well as a foot pump, if you don't want to conserve your batteries. And there's a second sink over here, and that pump uh, pumps uh, salt water. And plenty of storage. There, and also down here. For all the pots, pans, coffee maker, of course, got to have that. Wine glass, got to have that. And some dishes and things up here, as well as down here. 
And of course there's also storage under the sink. And there's a rack of drawers here that uh, have my silverware and bags and pots and pan holders and all kinds of stuff like that. And then here is a pantry with trays that pull out. And you have your food items in there, whatever you want. There's four of those. This is the refrigerator unit. Um, but by the way, the icebox is back here behind the, behind the uh, sink. And here is a big hanging locker where you put your clothes on hangers. And here is the head, or the bathroom. It has a hand-operated toilet. And the sink again has hot and cold running water. And uh, this nozzle also pulls out and you can uh, use it as a shower. There's a drain at the floor there, so uh, when things get soaking wet, they just drain out. And it's pretty good size for a boat this size. It's, it's a pretty good size head, although I'm sure it looks pretty small in the video. And then the front sleeping area, or the V-berth, goes back over here. And a filler goes in here, so this whole thing is all cushioned uh, when uh, you're ready to use it. Or if just one person can sleep on the side without putting the filler in, but we usually put it in just because it's more comfortable that way. And here's the other side of the uh, settee and eating area. And there's the ladder that takes you up and out the companionway. And pretty much that's it. Oh, the engine is in that box underneath at the base of the ladder. And yeah, that's pretty much it.